Hi there, Sugar Snaps. Let's print our own fabric using your own block print design. If you wanna learn how to create your own block print, check out the video in the little circle I up above me, and I'll show you how I carved this block and how to design your own block for block printing. This is an easy cut linoleum that I got from Dick Blick Art Supplies. Uh, this is good for printing on fabric because it's uh, malleable and will print into the crevices of the fabric. I also have here linoleum blocks that are good for printing on paper because they're tougher, they have uh, carved with crisper lines and they print well on paper surfaces. So um, you can, use either one, I would suggest using a rubber block for fabric printing. So today I'm going to go, I'm going to print this piece of cotton muslin. Um, but I want to show some different fabrics and how they respond to block printing. I have a couple different samples here that I'll print to show how they how they respond to block printing. So the materials and tools you'll need to block print fabric are first off a piece of fabric to print on. I'm going to use this cotton muslin. Then you'll need a block, preferably a rubber carved block. I have a number of different colors of speedball oil-based printing ink, and I'll talk about how to make that um, fabric and waterproof um, later. You'll need a rubber brayer, a pair of fabric scissors, your speedball carving tool to do any last minute changes on the block. We'll do a test print to make sure your block um, prints the way you want to and if you need to do any alterations, trim anything down, having your carving tool handy is good. I have a piece of glass that I'll use as my um, surface for the ink and some duct tape because we'll finish off the glass. I'll show you how to finish off a piece of glass to use um, so that it's safe to handle without um, cutting yourself on the edges. And then of course, um, I'll be showing you the different samples um, as we print. I also have my ironing mat and my iron. When you're working with fabric and block printing, you want everything to be um, ironed and smooth so that the print applies evenly onto your fabric surface. So keeping that handy. I like using this tabletop mat. I got this from Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, you can probably find them at Target or other home goods stores. Um, so having that on your work surface is handy because you can just move over and, and use the iron quickly. I purchased all my block printing materials on Blick Art Materials online and I'll put um, links to everything in the description below. So for the glass piece, I'll set the glass piece in front of me and I'm going to measure out a length of the duct tape to the length of each edge of your piece of glass. And I'm going to put a small edge of duct tape on one side and let the rest overlap onto the other side because I want as much of the glass surface as I can have uh, for the ink to spread out. So I'll come in here and I'm using a one and a half inch wide duct tape here. So I'll measure out the amount of duct tape I need and place it onto the edge, overlapping the edge slightly. So I have about a quarter of an inch of overlap that I can cut away later. And then I'll slide my finger along it to get the tape to stick to the glass and then tear off again, a little bit extra on the end. So there's one side of tape and now I'll turn it over and carefully butting it right up against the edge, fold it to the other side. and then press down. Careful with the other edges because they are sharp. You don't want to slide your hand along them. Okay, so there's one side. And I'll do the opposite side. Trying to catch a little bit less of the edge here, like so. Okay, and then flip it over and fold it over like this. 
run your hand along the top to press the tape down. Okay, so now I have in pieces overlapped and I'll come in with my scissors and clip the ends flush with the glass. Okay. And now do the other two sides. over top and overlapping the ends again. Like so. Okay, and then cut these off as well. Okay, so there is your paint palette made out of a piece of glass. You can also purchase a paint palette. Blick Art Supplies also carries a palette for block printing that you can purchase or you can use a picture frame piece of glass like this. Next, I wanna show you some sample block prints on these pieces of fabric. I have a, several different types of fabric here and I'll go over them as I print. First off, I'm going to iron these so that they're nice and smooth. So to set up your paint palette, you want to pick a color or pick a combination of colors to mix your own. And I'm going to start with, I've got a couple different colors here. So I'm going to start with a black so that I can try to see it on all the different colors I have represented here. So I'm going to unscrew the cap and squeeze a small amount onto the middle of my palette here. And then I'm going to come in with my brayer and begin to roll the ink out onto the surface of my palette so that I'm getting an equal amount onto the brayer. So give it a roll a couple of times, allow it to spread out onto your surface, and that's your roller loaded with ink and ready to go. So set that aside until you're ready to do your print. Now I have a piece of cardboard I'm going to lay here and I'll put a piece of paper on top of that to do each one of my swatches. You'll want to either cover your work surface when you're block printing or work in a surface you can easily clean up afterwards. If you're working with oil-based paint, I suggest covering your surface with cardboard or newspaper or something that um, will protect the table from the ink. So I have a piece of paper here and I'm gonna start with this white linen. This is a linen heavyweight fabric. This is a heavy linen fabric. So I'll lay this out on my surface and then I'm going to take my block, set it here on a piece of paper and use my roller to roll the ink onto the surface of the block. And you want to roll in one direction. Oops. Okay, and then lift up your block and holding on to the edges, go ahead and hover over your piece of fabric until you've centered it where you want it to be, and then gently place it on the fabric. And you can use a clean brayer to bray the back of this block print so that it um, prints evenly onto the fabric or you can use the palm of your hand, press down with one hand so that it doesn't shift and then rub the back of the block print so that it prints onto the fabric. And then once you've done that for a few seconds, you can hold the fabric down with one hand and lift up with the other. And there is my block print. So I'll set this side up here. 
to dry. On this design, I have some edges, some markings from the block print where the background is more raised and the ink picked up that background. And I like that on my design, but if you want to remove any of that, you can use your carving tool to go in and make adjustments um, to hide all of those or to carve those down. Okay, so next up, I have a piece of cotton muslin. Again, I'm going to load up my brayer with ink try to get an even amount on the brayer and then come over rolling in one direction roll the ink onto the block then lift up okay i'm going to hover over and set down and it's a good idea to practice on a scrap piece of fabric before you start printing the fabric that you want to use for your project um, because you'll get a handle for how to lay the block and how to press down on the block, how much pressure you need um, and what kind of surface you're working on, um, how that's going to respond on the fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna hold the fabric down and lift up one end and lift all the way up. So there is the print on cotton muslin. Okay, so now I have a cotton sateen and I'm gonna make sure that I'm printing on the sateen side, which is here. And if you're working with cotton sateen or another fabric that's woven loosely or um, shifts around a lot, you want to probably tape it down if you're doing something other than a sample because the, the fabric will shift quite um, easily as you set down the print or as you're moving around the fabric. And it could create a wonky design if you're printing and it shifts. Okay, so now I have this crepe chiffon and this will be interesting because the I'm expecting the inks to bleed through here. So I have the piece of paper on my cardboard to catch the ink and it hasn't gone through on the other fabrics, but it might on this one. So we'll just be careful. So this one's going to shift quite a bit as well. So I want to work carefully with it. Okay, and then carefully lift up. Okay, and so we have a hint of a design and I'm gonna check the back. Oh, it didn't bleed through too much. Okay, I'm going to skip the velvet because I don't think the black will show up on that. We'll come back to that with a white ink. And this is a plain weave cotton fabric. Or quilter's cotton. Okay, and then we'll do the velvet. Okay, for the velvet swatch, I'm gonna use a white paint so that it shows up on the velvet better. So I'll put white on my board now. I've washed, cleaned, cleaned off all of my tools to do the white. 
And again, spread out the white. And then apply it to your block. and then I'll lift this up, place it on the fabric. And there is that one. Okay, so we have a variety of different samples here. The velvet with a white paint. This is Quilter's Cotton with a black oil-based paint. This is the chiffon, it's see-through with black. The, the print is very faint on the chiffon because as it lays flat, the, dis, the opacity of the paint and the opacity of the fabric kind of lose some of the design. The print is good, but you can't see the design as well. This is the cotton sateen. It has a nice crisp line. The print turned out really well on this one. This is cotton muslin, slightly less density in the print. This could be because I didn't press hard enough, but it also could be that the texture of the material is more variegated, and so it didn't grasp as much of the paint. And then the linen, fabric also has not as much denseness in the design as this cotton sateen and that is also due to the fact that the the weave is denser and the threads are thicker and so um, the weave doesn't pick up as much ink because the surface is more variegated. Before you print your fabric, you need to iron it so that it's totally um, wrinkle free or as wrinkle free as you can get it. So I'm gonna set it here on my ironing mat and give it a good pressing to try to get it as smooth as possible. Some fabrics will have permanent wrinkles in them, wrinkles that have been heat set and so they will be hard to get out. Um, and that's okay, you can, uh, print over them, no problem. You might have a little bit of a um, lift in the ink, but um, iron as best as you can. Okay, if you are gonna work with a large piece of fabric, spread the your work surface with a piece of um, paper or cardboard. Here I'm working with some tracing paper, so I'll lay this out tear off a piece that fits my work surface and then spread my fabric out on top. And depending on what type of fabric you're working with, it may be a good idea to tape down the edges. So I have, with masking tape or duct tape, so I have some duct tape here that I'll just tape down the edges so that it doesn't shift too drastically. And if you're working with a chiffon or a gauzy fabric, 
that's sheer or a fabric that shifts dramatically, you'll want to put tape all around the edges to hold it very steady. Okay, so fabric spread out and taped. Now you'll want to set up your palette. As we went over earlier, you will put an amount of ink into the center of your palette and then spread it out with your brayer to evenly spread out the ink on your brayer. And I'm going to move some things out of my way so that I can move the ink up. Put my block here to the side. Okay, so the next thing to consider is how to orient your blocks or your prints onto the fabric. And I'm going to do that by laying the block onto the fabric. And you can either sketch in lines with a pencil that will then wash out later or just eyeball where you're going to place your design. So here I'm going to line them up because I want them to be in rows and then I want to offset them on the next row. So I'll put in some lines to give me a guide. And right now I'm working with a painted block, but it's best to do this with a dry block so that you're not getting ink on your fabric before you print it. Okay, so to offset, I'm gonna place it opposite of the lines I did before. And you can always adjust this as you print if you see a problem with where your layout is. And if you want the prints to go all the way to the edge of your fabric, go ahead and mark that as well if you want to catch as much of the fabric as possible. You'll probably want to slide a piece of paper to the side or underneath the edge to catch any excess ink. I have the tracing paper on the outside, but if the paper doesn't extend out far enough, you can slide an extra piece of paper in to do that for you. So I've got two rows traced out onto my fabric, and now I'm going to print the first row and see how the um, see how it lays out on the fabric. So gently rolling the roller in the same direction to apply the paint two or three times. And then I'll start on one end, place the block and use my hand to press the ink into the fabric. and then gently lift up. And there is my first print. And my print has an orientation where uh, I have two different designs on either side. And you can always play around with the placement of your print to change the design. I could do it so that this, this print is in the same orientation every print or switch it around to change it up.
and once you've set your block down on the fabric, you can't lift it up because some of the ink has already transferred and you'll end up with a blurry image if you reset it. And if you start to see your print become more faded and not as dark as your original prints, go ahead and add more ink to your palette. Okay, so I'm gonna catch this edge here by placing this down and pressing it into just the one side of the fabric that it is set on. And lift up, and there I caught the edge. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on the offset row. So I'll come in and place this in. And where I put my marks, I wasn't sure where it was going to land, and so I'm gonna squeeze down further than my marks are. But again, those will wash out in the first washing. So I'm gonna add some ink. Spread it out. And then so you're loading up your brayer and then rolling that onto your block. I'm gonna check my design. block printed fabric. You want to allow your fabric to sit on the surface that you printed it on for 24 hours to allow the ink to dry. Allow your block print to dry for 24 to 48 hours and then you want to heat set it with an iron. This will mean that it waterproofs it so that the ink won't come out in the wash and it won't um, mess up your print. So set the iron to the temperature suitable for the fabric that you used. I have a linen fabric here, so my settings for linen and cotton. And then run over the surface of your print. You can iron straight on to the, the ink or use a press cloth over the piece of material and iron with a press cloth. 
And now your piece is finished and ready to be used for your project and can go through the wash when needed. The next thing you'll want to do is to clean your block print and your palette. To clean your block printing tools, you'll want paper towels, your tools, a pair of rubber gloves, and Castile soap and vegetable oil. Today I'm using a cheap olive oil. So begin by pulling off a piece of paper towel and folding it into the width of your brayer and then put your rubber gloves on. And start by rolling the excess paint onto the paper towels, opening them up Try to keep this off of your surface. Oil-based paints are um, challenging to remove because they don't, they're not water soluble. They don't wash away with water. And um, you could use turpentine or other um, oil-based paint cleaners, but often those are not non-toxic. So working with olive oil or Castile soap is a healthier option. Okay, so now I'm gonna roll some soap onto the roller and continue to roll it out and wipe it off. And you can also use the olive oil to break down the, the paint surface. And then once you've gotten all of the paint off, use another paper towel to wipe off the grease the, the oil, excess oil. You don't want your tools to be slimy or greasy the next time you use them. So wipe that down. Okay, and so now my brayer is clean. And you can use it, the olive oil on a cloth to wipe down your work surface as well to get any smudges off your work surface and then just rub it down with a paper towel or a um, wet rag to get the oil removed. Okay, so now for the um, your palette, you can scrape the excess ink off with a uh, paint scraper or if it, you don't have much left on your surface, you can go ahead and go in and start wiping it down. And you'll want a garbage can near you so that you can throw things straight into the garbage. Throw the paper towel straight into the garbage as you work. And then I'll apply some olive oil to this as well. Vegetable oil is a cheaper, um, better option for wiping down your tools. Okay, so I've got that clean. Now I can wipe it down, get all the paint off, and then go wash this off with some soap and water to totally clean away the grease, so I'll set that aside. And then I'm going to go in with a new paper towel for this block print, set it down, and lay it on to the paper towel. And just like I'm going, like I was printing the fabric, I'm gonna print on the paper towel to try to get rid of the excess paint. So I'll lift that up and then open it up and do the other side.
and you can even flip it over and rub from this side with your paper towel and you're just wiping the ink off of the print okay you can apply some oil to the print as well or to the block as well Okay, and lastly, I like to go over my block in a sink of cool water with some Castile soap and a toothbrush to wash away any excess paint that might be uh, clinging on to the edges. Once you've washed your block down, you'll want to pat it dry with a paper towel or a towel and get both sides dry. And kind of slap it down to get out any extra moisture. And then before you use the block again, allow it to completely dry and you can go in and make touch-ups to it if you see excess paint that you missed or rewash it if you, um, if there's a lot of extra paint on your block. And here's my completed fabric. If you have followed along with me, you'll have a piece of fabric that you can now use for sewing projects or as a tablecloth or other piece of linen. And you can use this technique to design any of your own fabrics for clothing or other pieces. If you create a block printed piece of fabric, be sure to tag me on Instagram at textile indie or hashtag textile indie block printing. I'd love to see what you create. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, subscribe below to see more block printing, spinning, natural dyeing, basketry, and other fiber arts videos. And like this video to support my channel. Thanks so much. See you next time.